started in 2011 in Finland. And what we do is we enable the retailers to, to um, deliver customers a personalized shopping experience. And to that, we use average order value, conversion rate, and customer retention. I promise I keep this part very, very short and we jump into the examples right away. We've had a pretty good run. Um, we op we uh, um, launched the product in September 2013. So we've been up and running now for around 20 months. Our idea is to make it easy for online retailers. I think there was lots of retailers in the room, so I think you all agree that there's quite a lot to do for online retailers today. So we want to make the solution available for everyone. And we've been growing quite rapidly. Today we work with more than 7,000 retailers from more than 100 countries, which has all happened in the last 20 months. And why do we think that personalized recommendation and personalization online stores generally is important for online retailers, online businesses? Well, here's, here's a couple of numbers to prove that before we kick in with the example. So this is just based on the data that we see across the 7,000 stores using Nostro. So we have seen, for example, increase on average order value by more than 20% across all the stores using online personalization. We've seen conversion increase of over 60%, and we've seen our uh, time spent on site increase by by really large number, by more than 200% across all the stores that do personalization. So what I basically want to walk you through today is kind of a couple of uh, ideas around the state of e-commerce today. Uh, I'm going to talk about the personalized uh, recommendations, of course, um, and then I want to walk you through kind of a typical e-commerce um, user journey. So kind of use some good examples and bad examples. Um, I can tell you already now that I'm going to show some sites that we have found out and uh, Hopefully we don't get into an awkward situation. One time when we were doing a similar type of meetup, we actually had the retailer in the room whose site we were using as a bad example. That was a little bit awkward. They're using Nostra today. So, uh, <laughs> very happy. Um, so that's basically the structure, structure for today's talk. Um, good. So I think a couple of things that, especially all the retailers in this room, and I think most of the people here have something to do with e-commerce and online retailers, a couple of things that you have noticed, noticed or even as an as online shopper yourself. So I think generally buyers are shopping around more and, and online, online shoppers they're becoming more demanding. So they expect, uh, they ex expect better design, they expect better uh, selection of product, they expect personalization, they expect omnichannel and so on, because there's so much to choose from for the online shoppers. I think the other thing that we have noticed talking to these thousands of retailers is that the buying cycles in general are getting much longer. So people use lots of mobile, they browse on mobile on their way to work, then they go to their desktop, they actually make the purchase, they do lots of comparison. If you run an electronic store, you go to price comparison sites, all of these. So they generally spend more time and there's more info available for them to actually make the purchase in an online store. And I think the third thing, and there's lots of people around the um, SEO, SCM, PPC world here. I think the third thing is that um, there's more and more marketing channels as well. There's the SEO, there's SCM, different PPC channels, social media marketing, which can be super, super overwhelming for online merchants. And at the same time, the pricing on that size, the bidding side is, is, is going up. So if we think about online retailer today, and, and, and maybe also we're running an online shop, can answer. If we think about how online retailers spent their money uh, comparing before shopping, on-site and after shopping, does anyone know how much of the money is spent on before shopping, actually driving traffic on the site? If we think percentages, how big percentage of the spend actually go on customer acquisition? Anyone have an idea? 67%. 67%? 90%. Any other? No. $35 a customer. <laughs> customer acquisition cost, yeah, like 50, that. average. 50 or 60 bucks, if I want. We talk about percentages between those three. Actually, 90% is correct that we see. So generally, online retailers, um, we work with very different type of online retailers as well. We work with someone who does 150 million online revenues per year. We work with someone who started the Shopify store yesterday. Um, so generally, we see 90% spent on customer acquisition. Now. After all hard work and, uh, and money spent, 60% uh, visit the shopping area, 30% place items on cart. So how many purchases? Mm -hmm. 10%. 5. 5. 5. 10. Less than 5. 1. 3%. 3%. 
So on average, we see 2.8 percent So there was guys working on email marketing here, card abandonment, and so on. So 90 percent of the shopping carts are generally actually abandoned, which is a massive opportunity cost. Anyone of the online retailers get lots of sales on mobile? Anybody strong on mobile? What do you think is the conversion rate on average on mobile? Much higher. Uh, well, one, one percent. Higher? Less than one percent. One percent. That's lower. 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 And it's a huge opportunity cost. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm from Finland, like a company. Um, we have our own e-commerce laws. You know, we kind of copy what happens in the U.S. and then we do it in Europe with a different name. Uh, but, but we keep hearing that there's this really up and coming kind of online site that sells quite a lot, like books or something in the US, it's called Amazon.com. Um, so I think everybody's been shopping at Amazon and what happens to me when I shop at Amazon is that when I click on a product I think everything around me starts getting super interesting. Um, and we have done quite a lot of research on Amazon, as you might guess. And uh, around 70%, actually all over 75% on Amazon pages actually contain personalized recommendations. So there's a reason why it's all relevant to you. So does anyone know around what's the conversion rate on Amazon? Six times higher. Six times higher. 18%. That's what sales space <laughs> Somebody, Somebody's really in the sales page. <laughs> According to what we know, Amazon has 18% conversion rate. Anyone Ooh. here running an online shop at 18% of the right? How do you get that? Yeah, we, have our, we have our chance. We have our chance. They don't have to publish the data. We know, we know lots of people. So I think it's quite easy to see why that happens. So I think generally most, many online stores, I mean, they look fairly similar. Uh, some of the online stores could be even considered, con considered boring. When you go into Amazon, um, you know, from the moment you arrive, you get something personal. Like I said before, I think the best way to describe it when you click on a product, everything around the shopping experience um, kind of starts becoming very, very interesting. Now, I think generally, we've been talking with lots of retailers and partners and so on uh, in the last last two years, and, and what we often hear is like, merchants don't maybe even realize that they could do the same. So often these type of solutions, like personalization for example, seeing that something that, okay, the big retailers, the Amazon and these guys, they can do it, but we can't actually do it. But it's not that difficult. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through a couple of examples, as I said. Hopefully there's uh, no one running these stores in the room. Uh, and, uh, and I'll show you a couple of examples, the good and the bad, on, on what actually could be done with the very simple thing of actually using the data of your online shoppers, what they actually purchase, what they like, and combining that and offering that as a personalized customer journey. And the key is really not to just make assumptions. I think there's so many retailers out there who make assumptions. I think this is what people will buy, when you should be actually basing it on, on, on data. That's a nice animation. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> So let's make it simple. Let's 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 start with the home page, and maybe as a uh, as a quick background before we get into this. So one of the we have a kind of a nice background story within our company at Nosto. We we actually founded by an online merchant. So we, our founder was an online merchant. He wanted to do personalization and omnichannel all of this. He didn't have the tools for that. Um, his name was actually Yulha, which is kind of funny because there's another thing in the room. It's a small country. Um, so and, and we've kind of tried to go with that, or kind of listen to our merchant. And we have this, one of our kind of, part of our culture and the company is called Always Listening. Uh, we're, for example, using a, is anybody using Slack here in your company? We love Slack. We have a channel in Slack across all different offices, which is called Always Listening. And the idea is that every time a merchant or partner tells us something in interesting around shopping experience or e-commerce or something like that, we post it on that. And then once a week, we collect it, that we, we send it to our in Anyway, so all of these examples have actually come through uh, that always listening channel. So let's start from the front page. So average time before an internet user decides if they, if they stay or leave the website. What's the time? Front page. Less than five seconds. Of course. Three seconds. So you spend all that money again driving the person on the side. They land on the front page and they spend three seconds on the side. <clears throat> 
Now I'm going to show you the first example. Um, the background of this, our marketing director came from him, the idea. He got a, he got a, uh, a baby one, one, one year ago, and he started looking for lots of uh, baby, baby products, baby clothing and so on. So he had actually clicked on, on a link, on a, on a, on a banner, um, and uh, landed up on this side on the front page. So he was actually clicking on an ad that says baby clothing, and he ended up here. So what do we think that this retailer sells? <laughs> exactly. So this has a stool and kind of plates and, and all of that, and 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 it's kind of easy to see why this shop would be um, uh, kind of struggling with conversion. Where when you actually go forward with shopping experience, there's massive number of baby items sold on the store. Mm -hmm. There's no sign of that on the front page. <coughs> no sign of that in, in, in the page where you actually land. So there's massive number of baby items. Also, they sell artwork. You can see that on the front page. They sell paintings, they sell jewelry, uh, and, and finally they sell like wedding gifts and stuff like that. And none of those products that they actually sell are highlighted on the product page. Too many animations. So you actually end up, you, you think you're coming to a, a, a kind of a furniture store. So you a different example. I don't know, like, there's one Finn in a room, but there's, when you're from the Nordic countries, you know, there's this big hate, love and hate relationship between Finland and Sweden. And it hate, kind of, it hurts me to show an example of a Swedish thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it anyway, because they've done it really well. First of all, babyshop.com, you know, it's got a good URL for a baby shop. Kind of, has a clue there. Um, good looking shop from, for, first of all, very nice, very nice banners in here. Got their summer sales, got their categories. And a very, very simple thing that they actually do is most popular in store right now, which is showing last 24 hours most viewed products. Such a simple thing, welcoming a new customer, you don't know that customer, so what do you do? You offer them the products that the crowd is browsing right now. Especially being in Sweden, being a Swedish product, you know, weather chasing all the time, very important to have that, uh, that a short time span, a short time period there. Um, on top of that, they've chosen the, the, the top seller categories, the categories that sell the most, and done a top list of the week on those, those categories as well. So immediately when you land the store, you know, okay, I'm coming to babyshop.com, I click on an ad, I want to buy baby clothes, this is what I should be buying. And we don't know, they don't know the customer, so of course we should offer them based on crowd wisdom that they could be actually browsing. So, the numbers are quite impressive. Time spent on site increased by 66% when they started doing personalization on babyshop.com. Number of products viewed increased by more than 120%, and conversion in rate increased by 77%. Within the first months, they were actually showing personalization on the site, or recommendations. And definitely, we don't have a number on that, but definitely reduced bounce rate quite a lot if you compare with the previous total look at it. So, what about returning visitors then? Um, the ones who are running an online store here, working for an online retailer, do you show something to the uh, returning visitors? If I've been into your store before and I come back, do I see something based on my behavior? Mm -hmm. You guys? Yeah, yes. Marketing. yeah definitely. <coughs> Um, so less than 15% of the people, of the customers, are actually buying from the from the first contact. So I'll show you an example again. So Philips, um, another nice magenta retailer, actually, uh, they do a very good job with this as well. Simple thing again, top sellers, and on top of that, products you previously considered. Makes it very easy for me. Maybe I should have bought that Mickey Mouse lamp from my kids last time. I get it back in there. This is a very basic example. Of course, you can take that to the next level and look into okay. Based on your browsing history, these are the kind of product that we would recommend for you to buy as well. Um, they had an average click-through rate of 7.4% from this recommendation on the front page. Really, really powerful. So let's move forward with the shopping experience um, and take a look at the category page. I think this is, this is quite typical uh, page where you actually browse the store. So let's take an example, you want to buy, want to buy a pair of jeans or a pair of sneakers or you want to buy a dress for, for a party and you're sitting. Even better example would be to actually have this on mobile. 
So you actually land on the category base, maybe through an ad, uh, and you start browsing through. And in the end you notice that, all right, on the category page, there's 179 different items split between five different pages. And we talk to a lot of retailers and we often ask, so on a category page, how do you define what is on top of the page? And the answer is normally like, yeah, you know, like once a month somebody looks into sales and we kind of optimize a little bit and if something goes out of stock or something new comes, we put it on top and so on. And this is, you can imagine if you're doing this on mobile, you're sitting in a metro and you're trying to look for, you know where to buy a pair of jeans or a dress and you're kind of browsing through 179 different products and clicking through on each single one of them. Um, it's not a very good shopping experience. Yeah, the online, the, the network actually works in Finnish metro. <laughs> but there's Wi-Fi stations here as well, I've seen, I've seen. So, let me show a very similar example. Again, looking for dresses, it's the iconic, it's the, it's the biggest um, fashion retailer in Australia. Um, they do a very, very simple thing, today's best sellers. Again, looking at the product, most bought products within the last 24 hours on a category page. Making it very easy, I'm again going to use the subway example. You're sitting on a subway, you have a great network connection, maybe you're in Finland, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and it makes it just so much easier for you to actually, you know, find the, based on the crowd wisdom, find the products that, that people are actually interested in. I'll show you another example on this, which I personally love very much. Um, it's a UK tool centre. It's a manly store, um, selling tools, obviously, based in the UK. I guess it's even more obvious. So what they do here is the same thing. And what they have done, and this is background information, doesn't show to the show to the online shopper, they are actually prioritizing on the personalization of the recommendations, product that have a higher margin. So they are pushing brand that has a higher margin, and they're doing that as the category top sellers. Has been very, very powerful here for them. <clears throat> so again, let's move forward. We've been the front page, we've been a returning customer, we've been the category page. Let's take a step forward. We finally found a product that we actually like. We click on it, we end up on a product page. So let's say we want to buy a chair. So we click on that nice little picture on the front page, maybe on the top seller list. We end up on a product page that we see this massive picture. We realize, okay, I don't actually like this chair. Now, what do you think about this product page? What's, what's, what's wrong? There's no similar item. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's actually, and even more so, there's nothing you can go back to. So you end up on this page, and the only thing you can go is kind of go to navigation, or you can go to contact us, or something like that. Again, a massive, um, a massive reason for balance. You're not offering enough for the person to actually move forward. And what I said in the start, I mean, people, people browse around more, the shopping cycles are getting so only thing I can do pretty much is return to the to the category, just press back on my browser, and then I end up again with the massive list of products that we were just looking at before. Let's take another similar example from Icon M, also a Magento store by the way. See the hat chosen well today. Um, click on a product again. Very simple little thing. Customers who viewed this also viewed actually gives you the opportunity to move forward with the shopping experience. You get the big picture, I don't like that product, very simple, click on that and you, you continue with your shopping experience. You have more options for the online shopper to actually move forward. I have a question. Um, would you say that the wording also kind of helps because usually like the starter websites, like people who are starting up, like obviously like the main thing is like related products so I and what is on Amazon is customers who view this also view it. so it, like it obviously does help like what you type in there or like how you present the related items and not just call it related items I just noticed that so I thought I'd point that out to like maybe yeah. someone else no it's a, it's a very good point uh, we've seen some difference on it to be honest uh, We've seen kind of maybe less of a difference than we would expect it. Okay. It's more about the, the relevancy of the product. Okay. So if the products are relevant, it's not that big big difference. But we're, we're more comparing maybe uh, like purchases versus views, for example. Or might go well together, kind of those kind of things. Okay. Um, but, but 
we definitely see a difference, but not it's not massive. It's more about how relevant it actually is. That's what okay. we are saying. Thanks. But we encourage merchants to try obviously different options and keep the best practices. So, so what these guys have seen, they've seen 13% greater conversion actually by having this very simple personalized cross-selling element on, on the product page. And and maybe to continue with, with with that, I mean, you see lots of stores doing this manually. I think that's sometimes that's very good as well. It's in high priced items, definitely something goes well together. But but I mean, um, it kind of decreases over time. And, and, and the thing with the, the more data you have, uh, the better these type of recommendations come over time as well. So it's it's a very very powerful feature. In our kind of what we see is is, is the most used feature within fashion, uh, for example. I'll show you another quick example on this. So very similar situation. Here's a very different wording, more, more pieces we think you'll love, which has been working very good for this. It's enjoy the store, it's a, quite a big online retailer in, in UK, also running on Magento. Um, and what they do really well here, okay, they got the cross-selling, but another thing, if you look into prices, even though it's discounted items, the prices go from £18 to £25. Now if we look, at, look up, we look in the product that you actually have in your, in your product page, that's the problem now. So they're doing very beautifully. They're doing cross-selling, but they're doing dynamic, cross dynamic up-selling here as well. So actually showing uh, products that go well together, but actually have a higher pricing. So making much better average order value for them. What do they do when they show the higher product in the product page? Sorry? When they show the, higher, the, the more expensive product in the product page. Then they're not selling, they're just selling it across. It's, it's going to be 25, 25 pounds. So if you have the most expensive product then? I'm saying, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 so at the bottom there, just that's showing you more expensive products. Yeah, I mean, of course, then you, can, uh, then you can do a different type of recommendation. You can, for example, do upselling. So you just do uh, something that goes together with that, Packaging for example. Well. That's an example. Yeah. But this has been, like, when we, for example, introduced this feature, it's been one of the most powerful features. Uh, for, for retailers and, and across all the verticals as well. We have one store, they sell um, DSLR cameras and, and that's been amazing for them. So basically when somebody click on kind of a cheaper brand, they just have Nikons and yeah. all the nice brands there, it's been out of the roof. But it's the margin, not the, not the price that matters. Yeah, you can do, you yeah, can do either you can adapt or, of it yeah. or brand as well. You know? But dynamic upselling for, for fashion retailers is, is, uh, is, is, is quite key. So. How many of the retailers in the room, uh, how many of you are actually doing recommendations on the, on the cart page? Someone actually, someone actually adds product in the cart. You seeing good results from that? Yeah. Yeah? Increase in average order value? Yeah. Yeah? You don't want to give any exact figures. I can't share results over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 it's all about personalization. It's all about personalization. <laughs> we know you already. No, but seriously, it's, it's, I, I think the card page is the one where you, you normally have the big discussion. <coughs> because many retailers will tell you that you shouldn't have something on a card page. You shouldn't have anything that distracts the person from actually making the purchase. Uh, but let's take an example. This is one of my favorite examples. So, I'm here. Um, I want to buy a couch. I'm spending five thousand pounds on a couch. Now imagine the situation that you're actually in a furniture store somewhere in Manhattan, and you want to want to buy a five thousand pound uh, couch for five thousand dollars. So, do you think the salesperson selling you that couch would not offer you something else? Of course, they would sell you a pillow, or I don't know, a chair, or or a carpet, or something to go with the couch. They're not doing anything here. I'm, I'm willing to spend five thousand pounds on this couch, but I'm not being offered anything else. I probably have a bigger budget than that. Maybe at least the whatever 145 pounds I can spend on, on, a, on a pillow or something like that. So they are missing a massive opportunity to actually upsell a client. Another example: I'm buying a drill for 250 pounds, but I'm not being offered any other tools or drill bits or anything like that. I'm probably renovating probably need drill bits. I cannot just buy a drill. Again, another opportunity 
That's been let go for actually not selling. <coughs> Making the average order value actually higher. I think Festool is looking for some of the new marketing. But I don't know their budget anymore. Probably not. No, they're, they're a very big Reddit company. That's where they get everything from. But nobody's from Festivals in a row. No. <laughs> it was actually a very awkward situation. No, I mean, <laughs> our old salesperson actually went to sit Festivals and running their whole... Uh, okay. Yeah. You should definitely pay attention. So again, it's a massive opportunity. It's a no-brainer. I mean, if you again, if you go to physical, it's not rocket science. You go to a physical store, you buy a trill. Of course, they're going to help you something. It's, it's, it's common sense. So, a good example: UK Tool Center. They sell a trill, and then they sell the trill bits on top of that. Very easy upsell. Massive increase in average order value. Another thing, Oka Direct, also uh, furniture retailer <coughs> based out of the UK, also running on Magento. Um, I'm, I'm buying a nice chair. We're actually uh, offering on the pop-up um, uh, cushions or, uh, or pillows. 24% conversion rate increase from this recommendation only on, uh, on Oka Direct. I want to show you one more thing. There's lots of people running on, on Magento in this room. We all love Magento, we think it's great. Uh, but how many of you guys running on Magento is using something to help you with the search? Okay. Yeah. So I think, I don't know if you guys have seen, but we've seen across all platforms, search is often a bit of a problem. I think with Magento as well, there is one or two issues. I'm not showing if I should be saying that out loud, but... No, I'm going to do it. But everybody's using solar. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's using solar. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's lots of tools available around the search. We've been talking to lots of them and so on, and, and there's a couple of really, really nice tools. Uh, we'll focus only on search. Generally, customers who, who, who search are three to four times more likely to actually purchase something. So let, let, let me show you an example of... Again, good and bad example of how the search function can actually be used. So here's an example of, of search. So I'm searching for a dress in this online store. So what do I get? I get 61 pages with 1,201 items. I don't know about you guys, but I won't have the time to go through that. Not that I would be buying a dress, but, but then, even if it would be, let's say, 200 pairs of jeans, um, I wouldn't have the time to start going through 200. I wouldn't want to start going through 200. That's a, that's a horrible, horrible shopping experience. Let's take an example from Joy the Store. Searching for a dress. Got the search results, got the massive uh, four pages of 200 products. And customers who search for dress also viewed these products. Again, super simple, offering the customers actually something that other people who have the same preference, who are using the same keyword on the site, are actually viewing or buying from the store. I'll show you another example on search, because this is, this is something that I run into at least uh, when I try to do online shopping. So, <clears throat> sneaker marketplace. Let's take an example. So I'm from Finland. My Finnish, uh, my English is not very good, as you probably have noticed. So I, I misspell lots of things. So instead of LeBron James, I'm writing LeBron James. I think we've all been to this page. <laughs> Sorry, we have not been able to find uh, the product that you're looking for. Your search returned no results. 100% bounce rate. You go back to Google. You type it on Google. You find another store where you actually purchase the product. The funniest thing, when we started browsing this site. I think that should be found, right? It's a little small spelling mistake that the Finnish guy did. I mean, it should be found. It's not a very nice experience. I'll show you another example. Anybody know Flight Club? Based here in New York, very nice sneaker marketplace, running a Magento. Just check it out. Um, let me do the same search. The brown chains again. Search. They have the product as well. Magento tells you your search with has no results. Customer who searched with this keyword, the other guys who did the same mistake, <laughs> one letter 
do this price. And it works with plural. If you go in here and you type Nikes instead of Nike, you don't get anything from the search. Or if you misspell dress in many of the fashion retailers on Magento with three S's, you don't get results. Again, it's 100% it's bounce rate. It's the customer lost. So it's kind of curious. Um, do you guys have any data as in like your, um, you know, maybe the terms that people search um, is it like brand names or colors or, I mean, I don't know, do you have that sort of data? Yeah, we, yeah, we, we do that. Um, the, the fact that we give it out, that's another question, but we like to kind of rather put yeah, it in a nice like, package to, yeah, we, yeah, we, of course we have the data. We actually can see the customer kind of from what they search on the search engine when they land in the site and then, then what they search on the site as well. So, fair amount of data on that. So yeah, I mean, 15% um, uh, click-through rate on this recommendation across all the stores from, from our portfolio using this recommendation. You don't have to enter this information statically. It, it, it's, it's smart. It figures it out. Like it doesn't, you don't have to give alternative names to the brand, right? No. no. It, it, it doesn't also experiment. It does it based on where the customer goes next, and then it figures out that's where those It looks are. through the whole shopping journey. So if the customer has been on the site, um, like it looks through the whole um, whole customer bank. So anyone who's been using that keyword or clicking on those products, then looking into that. And then there's an algorithm behind it, looking at the time frame and you know how many clicks there was, so that they actually viewed these products and so on, which makes the relevancy. But uh, yeah, it's all automatic. It's mm -hmm. all very easy. I have a quick question. Um, I'm sorry if this is a little bit of a sidebar, but I just started typing L E V R, and the the decision that my phone made was Le Brown. That's what really? it should be. So, are is there any tie-in now, like based on what the assumptions are for your iPhone, what the what the word is that they think they're going to spell, which might lead to a misspelling? Um, there is and some yeah. correlation with the kind of search or what Solar is doing, like so that it's integrated, so it knows maybe yeah. what. Anyway. So we don't do that. There are mm -hmm. solutions that help you with that. Mm -hmm. So when you start typing, it actually gives you the options mm -hmm. uh, from there. But there's definitely solutions for that for mm -hmm. retailers. We don't do that. We just do kind of the enhanced search results and the very much essential. Mm -hmm. But that's definitely something you can do, mm -hmm. and you should. Yeah. Good. So that's like I said, 15% click through rate. I mean, from a site that would normally be 100% bounce rate. But that's that's really really powerful. So basically, um, I think I'm over time already. It's been uh, it's been 30 minutes. I promised 25. So I, I'm gonna leave it here. So basically, I mean, what I wanted to show you today and, and discuss was just kind of simply go through a com couple of the use cases that I think all of us have seen around the customer journey when when shopping online. So looking at the whole home page and how you, with the top list you can or you can showcase. And, and make it clear that the new shopper actually understands what you're selling on your online store. You can welcome uh, new customers, uh, sorry, existing customers with personal recommendations. How on category page you can make it easier for an online shopper to actually find the products that they're looking for. How on product page you can increase average order value conversion rate by doing cross selling and upselling. Um, how on cart base, you know, don't be shy now. You can still. You can still add products to it and, and, and increase average order value to a dyna dynamic upselling or you can just uh, upsell cheaper products as well. How definitely you should do something around search pace if you're running on Magento. And then of course there's lots of email experts also in this room, I didn't even get into that. You should definitely do a uh, triggered email list, you just do uh, personalized emails and, and then also populate error pages with personalized recommendations. Um, so I just wanted to give you an overview on what we have seen across 7,000 stores, how they do this, what are the best experiences, and hope you get something out of it. If you want to talk more, uh, my email is, is very simple, martiagnosto.com, and by the way, we're hiring people in the New York, Berlin, and London offices, so if anybody's interested, we're very happy to have a chat. Thank you. Any questions? Is there an attached um, average order value for those? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by? So you said like three, one percent, and you increase conversion. What's the average order value that across the platforms? That across all the stores that we work with? Yeah.
Uh, I don't because to correlate with the metrics thing. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't have that on top of my head. I mean, we, we can we have uh, we look at the overall uh, average order value increase regardless of what's the what's the actual average order value, and then we do vertical specific ones, uh, ones as well. Um, but we don't. I can't tell you right now. But I mean, our stores are everything who sells. We have B2B stores who sell like uh, 100,000 euro <laughs> kind of machinery to someone who sells oh, like yeah. uh, one euro stickers. You guys do monthly fee or do you guys charge? Yeah, so that's something we do fairly differently. Um, so we only charge on, on, uh, on CPA. So when we create socket recommendations and we generate the sale, then we take a cut from that. Um, so how it works is if you click on the personalization element, you buy that exact product within the same shopping window, which is max 30 minutes. Uh, then we take a cut of 4 to 1%, which is regressive. And there's no monthly fees, there's no starting cost, and uh, you can opt out anytime you want. Yeah, you can switch off the recommendations. What's the installation? How does the, what's the onboarding? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I mean, that's, that's another thing apart from the pricing that we do a little bit differently. So um, we only integrate in the UI layer. So the, actually, the uh, to collect the data, the implementation is very similar to Google Analytics, just JavaScript. And then we implement uh, the actual recommendations with diffs. So it's all um, UI layer implementation. With Magento, for example, and, and Shopify as well, um, we, have a, uh, we have a plugin uh, where you can do everything through the Magento backend, actually. So you can actually need to go to hospital.com. And what the plugin does is, first of all, it pulls out the data, purchase data from the last 30 days to avoid the problem of cold start. So we have data doing personalization from day one. And then after that, it kind of gives you the best practice for that platform. So it drops the divs, and then, from NOS to backend, you can just simply choose which one of the features you want to use and which not, and do the you know, all the filtering and all of that through the NOS to backend, and that's it. So very very easily, with we see Shopify Magento clients going live in less than an hour with everything. We were talking. You promised me no product feeds, no data feeds, none of that. Uh, sometimes that's uh, for our clients, you know. That can affect the implementation costs if they've got to get a feed set up to kind of get going and then get that approved and go through like a, um, an onboarding process. So kind of eliminating that is something that makes it a little bit easier for us to talk about uh, with our clients. Yeah, none of that. So basically, uh, through the tacking we have on a product page, we, we basically make a copy of every single page load that happens. And, and if something changes, like the product goes out of stock or you decide to change the pricing or something like that, um, with the next page load, we know that something's changed, and then we send our own crawler to check that. So we make the way for the product feed to update. No, no work with product feed. So that's, that's been made very, very simple. Do you want any special information on mobile platform? Yeah, I mean, you have some data? Because I'm in the field, so if you have some data, there is some people who will be interested. Uh, for, do you have an example about fashion retailer? Uh, fashion retailer working on mobile? Yes, on uh, mobile or e-commerce and uh, that use of technology? Yeah, actually, a um, big part of Magento retailers who, for example, have just responsive design and they pick on mobile, they choose Hosto and Hosto works perfectly on responsive design. And on top of that, we, we also have a mobile SDK, so we can also connect with, uh, with your app if you have a shopping app. So, yeah. And do you have some data, for example, the um, the increase, percentage the increase. Um, we've been so far looking for overall data, so that's compiling mobile and that's the traffic. Um, if you want something specific, I can make you into it, send you over. That's a good question. So you said you said you take a percentage of the order total? Is that how it yeah, from only that product that is being bought to Nostro. So if somebody has a pair of jeans on their shopping cart, and then through Nostro recommendation on the cross-selling page, they add a t-shirt, we only take a percentage of that t-shirt. So only the products that we what recommend. What's the percentage? What's the percentage? Yeah. It's from 4 to 1%. So it's a regressive model, the kind of more you sell, the less you right. But it's never more than 4% of the, uh, of the product value. 